Assalamu alaikum dears, myself Silke. Can you sit a horizontal curve out? So this is just land survey and we learn the horizontal curve sitting out by ordinate method. Remember the method I'm going to explain here is for circular curve. No matter what the structure is, if it's a road curve or a railway line curve, no problem. The method will be same for all these types. Also if a curve is a part of a building, this method can be used. Remember previously we have already learnt the horizontal curve sitting out by perpendicular upsets from tangent line. You can watch the video by clicking the link in the description. Before doing in calculation for horizontal curve sitting out by ordinate method, let me just give you a concept, a short concept of the method. Let's say if a road is gonna deflect with some angle called deflection angle and we have to put or sit out a horizontal curve between these two lines. These lines are also known by tangent lines. The first thing in this method, we just determine or locate the start point of the curve and the end point of the curve or you can say the PC and the TP. PC represent point of the curve and TP represent tangent point. And these two points can be located if we determine the tangent length of the curve. And the tangent length can be calculated using the nice plug and chicken formula like the tangent length equals our tangent of half of the deflection angle. When we got the position of these two points like the point PC and point TP, we of course join these both guys which is known by card of the curve. Then we take perpendicular upsets from this card which are known of course by ordinates. That's why this method is known by ordinate method. These upsets are just taken perpendicularly and the distance between two upsets are taken equal. No problem if it's variable. When the upsets are taken for the one side of the card, then of course we take the upsets for the another side of the card. After taking all these perpendicular upsets are ordinate, we just join the upper limit of each upset, which is of course the curve or a horizontal circular curve. And this is of course our requirement in this method. But the question is, what should be the value of each upset? Or how can we determine the value of each upset? For this, we have a nice plug and chicken formula like square root r square minus x square minus square root r square minus a square. Here O is just the required upset, R is the radius of the curve, and x is just the interval or you can say the distance between made upset and required upset. And lastly, A represent half of the card length. For example, if the length of the card is 100 meters, A will be taken as 50 meters. So this was just the concept of the method. Now for better understanding, we'll just do an example as we always do. Let's say if we are asked to calculate length of each upset from curve to set a horizontal curve out. If the radius of the curve is just 260 meter and the deflection angle of the curve is just 45.24 degrees. The given data is just enough to calculate length of each upset from card. So I'll come straight into solution. And I'll do of course the data determination and the first thing I want to calculate is just the card length. For this I'll use 2R sine theta by 2 or you can say pi by 2. If I do some plug and check in like L equals the radius is known 260 so 2 times 260 and the side of the given angle 45.24 divided by 2 because the deflection angle is just 45.24 degrees. Do some maths, we'll get of course the card length is 200 meters. And this is it. If you need A for the formula, of course A is just the half of the card so A will be just 100 because 200 divided by 2 is just 100. As we got the card length or length of the card, now of course we can just assume the interval is 20 meters. No problem if you assume this is 10 meters, 5 meters or just larger as 30 meters or 40 meters, no problem. But if the interval is a minimum value like 5 meters and 10 meters, the curve will be of course smooth. And if the interval is a maximum value like maximum from 20 like 30, 40 meters and 50 meters, the curve will be not smooth, it will be like a rough curve. So the smoothness of curve will of course depends upon the interval. If the interval is 20 meters, then the number of upsets will be just of course 10 upsets, which means 5 upsets per card one side 
and five upsets per card in other side. So we'll do calculation only per five upsets, which means we'll do calculation only per upsets that are at one side of the card. So now let's do calculation for the value calculation of upsets. And remember we got the half of the card is 100 meters. So let's calculate the upsets, right? And just remember that formula, right? Square root r square minus x square minus square root r square minus a square to calculate the value of each upset. Like you can say, if I do some plug and chug in, like upset 1 equals the r is known 260 minus x square. Remember the x over here is 20 meters. But for this time, as I'm calculating the matter in it or the upset 1, the value will be just 0. Because from this upset to this upset, the distance is just zero. Like if you calculate the distance from yourself to yourself, the distance will be just zero. So at this time, as I'm calculating the interval for upset one, so the distance from upset one to upset one will be just zero meters. So zero square. And remember there is also square root minus R square again, minus A is just 100. So minus 100 square and there is also a square root. To some maths we'll get of course the upset 1 is 20 meters. So the calculation for upset 1 is already done. Now we can calculate upset 2. The same method will be applied only the x will be changed. Like you can say upset 2 equals the r is known 260 meters. So 260 square minus x square. Remember the x will be the distance between O1 and O2 which is of course 20 meters because we have assumed the interval is 20 meters. So 20 square, remember square root is already present over there, minus r square again, minus a square which is of course 100 and square root is already present there. So the value will be just 19.229 meters. As the value of the second upset is just minimum than the value of the first upset, which means the curve calculation is okay. So we got the upset 2 is 19.229 meters. Now I can calculate the third upset using the same method r square minus x square square root and minus square root of r square minus a square. Let's do some plug and chug and like upset 3 equals the r is known 260 meters minus x square. Remember the interval is just 20 meters but I will not put 20 meters over here because the x is just the distance between the required upset and the middle upset. As the required upset is upset 3 so the distance between upset 1 and upset 3 will be taken as x which is of course 40 meters because 20 for the first upset and 20 for the second upset. So 20 plus 20 equals 40 meters. So minus 40 square. Remember the square root is over there. Minus r square minus a square. This is just the same we did for the previous two upsets. So do some short math. We'll get of course the upset 3 is 16.9 meters. So the video of upset 3 is 16.9 meters. Now we can calculate upset 4. But I'll do just uh, a direct plug and chug in, okay? I'll not spend much time over here because this is just time wastage stage uh, to do uh, every uh, calculation manually, right? So only uh, x will be changed, right? Like if you see uh, in this uh, upset 3, we have taken the x is 40 meters. So at this upset, like at upset 4, we'll just take, of course, 60 meter because uh, 20 meters will be just added to the previous upset, right? Or you can say 20 meters will be just added to the x value of the previous upset. Like here I have taken 60 meter because 40 meters plus 20 meter is just 60 meters, right? Do some maths, we'll get of course upset 4 is 12.98 meters. Now I can calculate upset 5 by direct plug and chug in like the r minus x. x over here is just 80 meters because the previous one was the 60 meters. So 60 meters plus 20 meters is just 80 meters. And uh, the other things are just the same as I have done for previous upsets, right? 
So do some maths, we'll get of course the upset 5 is 7.38 meters. And the upset 6 will be of course just 0, right? Say how? Just look at to this guy. The upset 6 equals the R is known 260 meters and minus the X will be 100 because the previous one is just AD. So AD plus 20 will be 100. So 100 square and square root is there minus square root R square minus A square that is just 100. So just look at to this equation type. If you subtract one from another, we'll get upset 6 is 0, 0 meters, right? Because there is no upset 6, we have only 5 upsets to be calculated, right? For one side and 5 spin other side. When the video of one upset becomes 0, this means this is just the end of calculating the values of upsets. Which means there is no need to calculate upset 7 over here. This is just the end of the curve, right? And at the end of the curve, the upset value is just zero, right? So now if you have all upsets, you can of course just set the curve by tap or another instrument that is just a linear measuring instrument, right? We just look at the point of curve in the tangent point and by joining these guys, we get of course the curve which is 200 meters and then we take uh, the perpendicular upset at the middle point of the card equals 20 meters and then the second upset equals 19.229 meters and the third one is 16.9 meters the fourth one is 12.98 meters and the fifth one is 7.38 meters when upsets are taken from the one side of the card then we take upsets from another side of the card and then we join of course the upper limits of each upset which is of course the required circular curve. And this is it. This was just our approach and we have of course done it. And at the end if you like the video make sure you subscribe and thumbs up for the video. Thank you dears for watching. See you next time.